Hi guys, this is Raul from Simply Learn, and today we are going to answer the question what is ITIL? Now, ITIL is a set of detailed practices for IT service management that focuses on aligning IT services to the needs of your business. So, here's what we'll be covering today. Firstly, we'll talk about why ITIL is so important, what exactly it is, the history of ITIL, some of the advantages of ITIL, the types of ITIL versions, and ITIL certificates. So, now let's answer the question why is ITIL so important? So, now let's understand this better by taking into consideration a conversation. Here we have two friends John and Jim talking to each other about ITIL. So Jim asks how we can opt for a holistic approach in the IT industry. By this he means that instead of taking each of the components in the IT industry separately, how can he take them as a whole or how can we see it as a whole. That's when John says that earlier it was difficult but now it isn't. All of that was possible with the help of ITIL. With it businesses could collaborate with the IT team so that they could deliver IT services to the stakeholders. Jim is really interested and wants to know more about the benefits of ITIL. So some of the benefits of ITIL are reduced IT costs, enhanced IT services, improved productivity, improved return on investment, improved customer satisfaction, better management of business risk and service disruption and improved resource utilization. Now we're going to talk about what exactly ITIL is. ITIL stands for Information Technology Infrastructure Library. It helps all organizations to deliver IT services using the most efficient methods. It helps businesses to improve service levels and reduce the cost of IT operations. Now here service levels has a different meaning. It basically focuses on how an organization maintains IT services for customers as well as it controls various activities involved in a process. Activities like planning, designing, delivering, deploying and managing services. Now the main goal of ITIL is to improve efficiency and achieve predictable service delivery. At the same time, a major requirement is to achieve high service quality. Now let's talk about the history of ITIL. ITIL's first version was introduced in 1989 to standardize IT service management. To provide for a uniform structure for service delivery, ITIL's second version was introduced in 2001. In 2007, ITIL's third version was introduced. Now this aimed to improve ITIL's service lifecycle by introducing a new feature of feedback looping. Aiming to clarify the processes of ITIL's third version, a new version of ITIL v3 was upgraded and released in 2011. In 2019, ITIL's fourth version was introduced. It provided a flexible as well as integrated system for the effective management of IT-enabled services. Now let's talk about the benefits of ITIL. Now it provides greater reliability, it improves the decision making process, you have a greater return on investment, the quality of service is much better and it's also cost efficient. Now let's talk about the different types of ITIL. So ITIL has 5 revisions, ITIL v1 to v4. Now let's talk about the first version of ITIL. ITIL v1 talks about processes that are involved in service support such as help desk management, change management and software distribution. Organizations and government agencies around the world began adopting the framework in the early 90s to improve their IT services and delivery capabilities. The first version consists of four major concepts, availability management, capacity management, contingency management and cost management. First let's talk about availability management. We all know that in an organization there are several IT services. These could include infrastructure, processes, roles and much more. Now availability management ensures that these are available based on the business requirement. Next we have capacity management. Now if there are any performance based issues, be it in services or resources, it's handled by capacity management. Next we have contingency management. Now with this you are able to identify vulnerabilities and make sure that such incidents don't happen again. And finally we have cost management. With this you are able to deliver as well as manage cost effective IT assets and resources. Next up let's have a look at the second version of ITIL, ITIL v2. Now this version of ITIL was published in the year 2001. It focused on the removal of duplicate entries, helped improve the consistency of topics and inclusion of new IT concepts. Some of the topics that were covered in ITIL v2 were problem management, release management, incident management and much more. ITIL v2 consists of two major concepts. The first one is service support. With this you are delivered processes so that you can control service interruptions. Now let's talk about service delivery. Now this provides a set of principles, policies as well as constraints which can be utilized for designing, building and deploying services that are delivered by service providers. Now one thing you should keep in mind is that the second version of ITIL did not have an organized service lifecycle unlike the version 3 that we are going to talk about very soon. 
Like I said, now let's talk about version 3 of ITIL. Now this version of ITIL was published in 2007. It adopted more of a lifecycle approach to service management with a greater emphasis on IT business integration. Now this is another upgrade and consists of 26 processes and functions. Now this version consists of 5 major sections. Let's have a look at each of these sections. Firstly, we have service strategy, service design, service transition, service operations and continual service improvement. First off, let's have a look at service strategy. Now, this is the process where you understand what the client's requirements are. What does the client want from your business? Secondly, we have service design. Now, this aims so that you can design IT services in an effective as well as efficient manner. In the third step, we have service transition. With this, you can plan, build, test and deploy the services into the customer's environments. Our fourth step involves service operations. Now, this maintains, this ensures that access to IT services is only given to authorized users and the issue of service failure is minimized. And finally, we have continual service improvement. Now, this makes sure that the IT services are always aligned to the business's needs. Now, let's have a look at the 2011 update of ITIL version 3. Now, this edition of ITIL is an improvement over the previous edition. It aimed to resolve the mistakes as well as inconsistencies in the text and diagrams across the suite. Now, this version underwent a lot of redesigning and use of a larger font intended to make ITIL a little more approachable to the reader. This version majorly highlights the service strategy volume. Now, this version, as I said before, doesn't have a lot of changes but has a few important updates. Firstly, let's have a look at service strategy. Now, in this version, a new service called Service Strategy Manager was introduced. This was for people who created as well as implemented IT strategies that aligned with the business requirements. Secondly, we have Service Design. Now, this implemented technical standards to the service design process as well as coordinated all the activities across all designs. Next, we have Service Transition. So this basically introduced something known as effective change management, which minimized the chances of service failure. Now for the fourth major concept, we have service operations. Now the latest update of service operation provides as well as maintains the processes for effective as well as efficient handling of service requests. And finally, we have continual service improvement. Now with a clear and concise seven step model, you're introduced to the improvement process. Now these seven steps are identifying the strategy for improvement, defining what exactly you will measure, gathering the data, processing the data, analyzing this information, presenting and using the information and implementing improvement. And now where is the current version of ITIL, ITIL v4. Now the main goal of ITIL v4 is to help all organizations deliver IT services using the most effective methods. Now ITIL can be utilized with a number of different frameworks such as Agile, Lean and DevOps. Now ITIL 4 consists of two major components, the four dimensions model and the ITIL service value system. Now let's have a look at the four dimensions model. Firstly, we have organizations and people. So people in the organization need to understand what their roles and responsibilities are. They need to have a clear understanding of how their role adds value to the organization. Then we have information and technology. This includes information, knowledge, techniques and technologies that are required for service management. Next, we have partners and suppliers. So this basically sets up contracts and other agreements between the organization and their partners. So here there's a focus on the organization's relationship with businesses like the ones that are involved in design, deployment, delivery, support and the continual improvement of services. And finally, we have value streams and processes. Now, a value stream is basically a series of steps that an organization follows so that they can create as well as deliver products or services to a consumer. Now, a well-defined process can greatly improve productivity within or across organizations. So it's very important that an organization address all of these four different dimensions to ensure that high service quality is maintained. Now, let's have a look at the service value system. Now, this is a set of activities that are performed by an organization so that they deliver a valuable output to the end users or consumers. Now, the SVS includes elements such as guiding principles, governance, service value chain, continual improvement and practices. So first, let's have a look at guiding principles. Now, these are a set of principles that help in providing a comprehensive understanding or a series of steps of how an organization should manage a service. Secondly, we have governance. Now, this is responsible for controlling as well as monitoring the organization. It can adapt to the guiding principles or it can define its own set of principles. 
Next, we have service value chain. Now, this is a set of activities that a business performs so that they can provide a valuable product or service to its consumers. Now, we have continual improvement. Now, this ensures that IT services are continuously aligned to the customer's expectations. And finally, we have management practices. These are 34 management practices that are designed so that an organization is able to achieve its goals. Now, these practices are divided into three major categories. Firstly, we have general management practices, service management practices, and technical management practices. Now, let's talk about ITIL certifications. Now, it's not only necessary that you learn about ITIL, it's very important that you get certified in it. Now, ITIL has its own certifications. Firstly, we have the foundation certification, which is an entry level certification. It includes all the concepts of ITIL service lifecycle and service management practices. After which you can take the next level exam, which is the practitioner certification. Now, this is a higher level examination, which aims to increase the ability of the individual who's writing the test to adopt and adapt ITIL to their organization. Then we have the intermediate certification, which helps an individual understand how to manage and coordinate the ITIL practice areas. Now, one thing you should note is that if you're preparing for the certification, you need to have a minimum of two years of experience in IT service management. Next up, we have the expert level certification, which covers the depth of ITIL processes and practices across all ITIL disciplines. And now for the final level, which is the master level certification. Now here, an individual is able to explain advanced methods of ITIL techniques and management practices. Now to achieve this certification, you need to have a minimum of two years of experience in the IT service management. And with that, we've reached the end of this session. I hope you guys found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.